don't get caught off guard and slip out of character. You don't want to do that. Don't let Satan do that to you. Don't lose your focus. Check this out. Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We just read Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. And now we're going to get into his word. Sometimes in life, this is me now, sometimes in life, we forget who we are. We forget where we stand. We forget what our role in life is, who we represent. You are not a representation of yourself. If you are in Christ, you have been bought with a price, which means you are not your own. So whatever reactions come out of you have to be governed by the ways of God, not your tendencies, not your proclivities, not your, your idiosyncrasies, not your habits. Yeah. So you do not want to go back to the beggarly elements of sin. All right. Now, the one thing we have to remember is that God understands why we get upset over certain things in life. He understands why our temperament is short over here and why we have long patience and long suffering over there. He understands our makeup, what makes us tick, mm -hmm. what rings your chimes, and what gets on your last nerve. And beyond that, God knows and understands why. But he does not excuse us. Hmm. He will help us in those areas on our weak side where we as the old folks used to say, on your leaning side, he will prop you up. But he will not give you an excuse to act a fool. He will not give you an excuse to crucify him af afresh by the words, by your attitudes, by your actions. He will not excuse you. That's why we have to constantly ask God to forgive us. Because we slip in and out of character all along the way. Thank God for grace. We just cannot take it for granted. Have you ever been in a play or taken a drama class? And one of the main things the drama teacher or the, the culture director will tell you, do not fall out of character. We used to have a, uh, his name was, was, uh, was Mr. Gill a drama teacher, and we would be right in the middle of a heart-wrenching, tear-jerking scene. And we'd be right at the pinnacle, the moment of climax, of emotional climax. <coughs> and everything would <coughs> crescendo. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're all caught up in it. We're all into it. And Mr. Gill had this hilarious um, hyena type of a laugh and he could turn it on and turn it off like turning on and off a switch and just to mess with our ability to stay in character he would come up on stage and start laughing oh my it was the hardest thing to stay in character while he was up there quack quan and and hoo hoo and <clears throat> cracking up but he did it to teach us how to stay in character no matter what. We would be saying our lines and staying in character. He'd jump in somebody's face and start hollering at him. He would do all kind of things to break our focus. You see what I mean? That's what the devil does. He does all kind of things to break our focus. He does all kind of stuff to distract us and throw us off balance and catch us off guard, hit us on our blind side. And if we're not prayerful, watchful, and careful, Jack will jump out the box, baby, and Jack will make God look pretty bad and make you look silly, real silly. So we have to be really careful 
about staying in character. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're acting our way through. We're not always feeling it. Sometimes what our feelings say is, cuss that sucker out. But our character, the new character, the new nature the Holy Spirit gave us says, no, stay in character. You are bought with a price. You're not your own. Represent. Represent God, God's way, not your way. You have the right to go off. But let's do it God's way, shall we? And the reason is not only for you and your growth and learning of self-control and self-discipline, but also for the sake of the person who's watching you react. It is an eyewitness to them that there are true believers on this earth that won't cuss me out because I cussed them out that won't blow me off because I blew them off, that are really doing their best to live a holy life, genuine and true. Those are the witnesses that keep people's attention that they don't forget too easily. If they do give their heart to the Lord, trust me, they're going to reflect back on one of you that stuck in their mind when you could have acted ugly when you had every right to act ugly and retaliate, but you kept it together and you stayed in character. So that's the way we are supposed to do when we're walking with the Lord and we're going through all these different chapters and verses in life. And life hits us from every side, every which way but loose. It knocks us silly. Can you stay focused enough, even if somebody's laughing in your face, even if somebody's making fun of you, if somebody's dissing you and humiliating you because of your faith in Jesus, if somebody is egging you on and pushing all the wrong buttons, ugh, and you're squeezing yourself trying to keep it together, so that you don't make a mockery out of your testimony. You don't make a mockery out of the fact that you are in Christ. You are a Christian. You are born again with a new nature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. See, behold, see, behold, all things, even my attitude, even my words, even my actions and my reactions are become new. Surprise, I'm not the old person you knew before. Surprise, check me out. Now, there's a song um, by, I think it's Helen Bale, I may, I may have it wrong, but <clears throat> it's a song called um, Look a Little Closer. I met an old friend today in a cafe on a hill. To see him after all these years somehow did not seem strange. We laughed and we reminisced about the times we used to live. Mm -hmm. And I could tell at least with him, nothing much had changed. An invitation to the pate was all he had to offer. Mm -hmm. Everyone will be there. And all the high you want is free. As he paid the check, he said we ought to hurry. But I could, I, I could tell... Oh, I'm trying to get the words right. So give me a minute. Um, as he paid the check, he said we ought to hurry. Anyway, there comes an awkward moment. I'm skipping ahead because I can't remember that part. There comes an awkward moment. And she's looking at him and she's thinking, look a little closer. Can't you see that I have changed? I'm not the girl I used to be. 
My life's been rearranged. Come on, look a little closer. Hmm. I'm not the one I used to be. I gave my life to Jesus and Jesus gave a brand new life to me. <laughs> now, it gets to the point where I'm telling the story now. She gets to the point where after he pays the check, there's an awkward moment. And she looks at him and she sees emptiness in his eyes. And she says, can we pray? And the guy said, you know, I don't believe in religion, you know, all that stuff. I don't believe in it. It ain't real anyway. She says, can I pray? So she prays for him. Lord, help him look a little closer. Help him see, feel your loving touch. Remove the blinders and change his heart. Surround him with your love. Lord, help him look a little closer. Let him see that I have changed. Mm. I mean, it's like, when, now I'm back to me now. When you are walking with the Lord, your whole demeanor, your whole language, it's like moving from England to Spain or from North America to South America, somewhere in Chile or Argentina or Mexico for that matter, you know, that's not even South, but it's right there. <clears throat> the language is not English, the language is Spanish. So when you go to that country, your language changes. You must adapt to the change. You must, as, as they say, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Well, here you are in another country, you must speak that country's language unless you just want to make it hard on yourself. So everybody doesn't know English. English is not God's language for some of y'all who think that's the superior language. So here you go into a Spanish country, you better start learning some Spanish or you're going to get lost and you won't even be able to understand when they tell you turn right, turn left, you know, uh, derecho or izquierda. You won't know any of those. You'll be lost in the sauce. So when you're in another country and you speak their language, then you must learn how to ask questions and say things a certain way with their grammatical structure, not yours, with their pronunciation, not yours, in order for them to be able to understand you. They respect you more when they hear you speaking with their dialect and their pronunciation and rolling the R's and knowing how to pronounce their words correctly, they respect you more. They kind of laugh at those of us who can't even speak Spanish. We try to make Spanish, we're, speak, we're speaking Spanglish, you know, um, habla inglés, uh, va a la, e I mean, ooh, yeah, we won't go there. It's comical to them. It sounds horrible. It really does. It takes a beautiful language and makes it ugly. Now, you take something, the language that God gave you is the language of love. Think about this. The language of love <clears throat> is kind, is sweet, is peaceful. And I'm going to read the language from Galatians chapter 5. So I want you to hear because the language of love is described in Galatians chapter 5, dealing with the works of the Spirit. Now, we're getting past the works of the flesh. We can all pretty much figure out what that is. Okay. Now, we're going to go to, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. You notice that's the first, that's the first fruit it mentions. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Now, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, listen to this. When you 
speak the language of love. You're not mean. You're not disrespectful. You're not spiteful. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you, Lord. Let's go to, go with me, you guys, to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The language of love speaks for itself, and I want you to hear what it says. When you are speaking the language of love, you do not co-mingle it with the language of the flesh. We're going to talk about the language of the flesh right now. This is your sinful nature, the beggarly elements. All right. And it says, Love, that's charity, suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, or shall we say is not arrogant, or shall we say is not narcissistic, or shall we say is not egotistical or full of pride. It does not behave itself unseemly which means you are not to behave yourself unseemly. Love seeketh not her own, which means you cannot demand everything and have it your own way. Everything's got to be your way or the highway. That's a control freak. That's not love. Hello. That's somebody that's going to pout, have an attitude if somebody doesn't do it their way and listen to their advice. Well, then forget you then. I ain't going to tell you nothing. That's not love. We're talking the language of love now. God's language. Seek is not our own, so it doesn't have to be your way or the highway. Is not easily provoked, short-tempered, short-fused. I'll knock you on your can. You say that to me again. You come up in my face. And, mm -hmm. What you say to me? What you looking at? No, not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Y'all yeah, know. I know she, I'm shit about nothing. Sitting up there trying to backstab me. I know what she's doing. You don't know squat. Watch yourself in that area. That's a biggie that a lot of people do. Thinketh no evil. That's being suspicious. Rejoices not in iniquity. Oh, she got her come up. Did you see that? Ooh, he fired her. That was so cold. I wish I had put that on Facebook. That would have been fun. No, you don't rejoice. In, no, you don't do that. You don't rejoice in a person's calamity, and you don't rejoice in a person's sin. Oh, look at them. I know they're they getting down. No. All right. It's not funny. It's not cute. So you don't rejoice in it. You don't, you don't revel in it. No but rejoices in truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all. See, that's a positive attitude. No, she didn't mean that. She's just trying to do so-and-so. Why do you have to make it into something poisonous? She's just trying to do her job. No, I know she, no, uh-uh. The person that believes that they mean well is the person that believeth all things, hopeth all things. You give people a, the benefit of the doubt, y'all. Endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. <laughs> For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. See, we think we know it all, but we know in part, baby. As long as you're in that earthen vessel you live in to be on this planet, you know only in part. So don't be so dogmatic about what other people have wrong when it comes to faith. But that which is perfect is come. That's Jesus Christ. Then that which is in part, 
shall be done away with. That's our earthly vessel and all this earthly stuff. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. What does that have to do? What does that have to do with love? What it means is you love like a child. When you're childish, you love like I have my way or I'm going to pout. I'm going to cop an attitude. I'm going to tell you off in public. I'm going to do you back. I'm like, yeah, I know payback is a dog, baby. Well, guess what? All of that is childish. I know what she said about me. She said this. She said she think I didn't hear. I heard every word. That's childish. That's the beggarly elements of life. Rise above that. Speak God's language of love. Get rid of all that crap. It's poison. You're feeding off of it. And you don't need to touch it with a 10-foot pole. Leave that crap alone. It will always do you wrong. Every single time. Hmm. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm going to stop there. But I just want to share with you, as far as reading that scripture, I just want to share with you, there's a language of love. The language of love is, um, you know what? I'm not even going to make a big deal out of that. Lord, take the anger out. Help me just forgive them. And help me, give me something nice I can do. Give me an idea of something nice I can do. Because they look like they're really under a real load. So you go to them with whatever God tells you to do. And you say, you know, I could tell you're really under a lot of pressure. Here, I got this for you. I thought this might make you feel better. Just let you know somebody's pulling for you and I'm praying for you. You have no idea what that could do to a person who's just been nasty to you. <clears throat> Be nice to people who are nasty to you? What? What are you talking about? That's the language of love. Because with love comes compassion. With compassion comes empathy. With empathy comes understanding. You see, you can't have all the empathy and the understanding and the compassion if you're not operating in God's love. No, no, you'll be suspicious. You'll be spiteful, vengeful. You could care less, indifferent, whatever. But when you speak God's language of love, it comes out of your attitude. It comes out of your actions. It comes out of the way you carry yourself. It comes out of your, of your words. It comes out of your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What comes out of your mouth? Because whatever you're saying, baby, is a major reflection of what's in your heart. Is it F this, F you, go to hell, I could care less, drop dead. <clears throat> what is it? What's coming out of your mouth? You ain't nothing but a hound dog. I mean, what's coming out of your mouth? Hmm. The capital B word, every time a woman gets on your nerves, male or female, you call them a B in a New York minute. Look, B, uh, and you popping your little finger and telling them all. Let them have a piece of your mind as you rubbing that. Mm. No, uh-uh, no. That's not the language of love. That is, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. When will you put away childish things, childish love, childish language, childish attitude, and start living, speaking, and loving God's way? Remember, you're not your own. You were bought with a price. So you must represent the one who pay the ultimate price for your soul or else you are crucifying him af afresh. Every time you show your little narrow or wide behind, you are crucifying him afresh. See, you think <clears throat> that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So you can do whatever you good and well please. No, you are not 
your own. I don't know how to drill that into you. You're at a job. You work for UPS. You ain't going there with your favorite Gucci suit or whatever they, a GQ looking all cute and fine with your, you know, your, your favorite slacks, your favorite blazer. No, no. You're going to wear that old ugly uniform. It may look ugly to you. It may be a color you hate, but you want them ducats, don't you? You want to get paid and you know you'll be done well on a job like that. So you told the line, you talk the talk, you walk the walk, you dress the dress. Don't you? If you can do that for a friggin' paycheck, why can you not do it for God? Some of you women walking around with 12 inches of cleavage, you got more cleavage than you got boobs. Your little booty sticking out so high you look like you could put a dinner tray on it. Carry it behind you. You want to show every fold in your belly. And you call yourself a born-again Christian representing God. Let me see you walk up in your job looking like that. Unless your job is handling that corner, well, then you're dressed appropriately. Think about it. How are you representing your body language, your spoken language, the language of your character? What language do you speak? Hmm. I just ask you to look over 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That is what we refer to as the love chapter. That is what I refer to as love language. Because language is not only spoken, language is acted out. Can you stay in character? Can you stay in love when everything around you is catty and nasty and, 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 and underhanded and spiteful and jealous and, Everything around you is nasty attitudes and little digs and little snide remarks. Can you still walk in love? Can you keep your character? When they're laughing like Bruce Gill used to laugh at us when we were trying to stay in an emotional moment, staying in character. Can you stay in character? Can you handle it? Now, if you know that you're weak in that area, this is what you do. You ask God to forgive you. You ask God to fill you afresh with his Holy Spirit because it's his power that helps your nature stay in character. That makes you even want to stay in character. It's his power, not yours. Not willpower. Holy Ghost power, baby. So you need the Holy Ghost to be filled with that new nature, with the change of heart, change of perspective, change of reaction, change of language, change of attire, change of representation, change of mindset. I beseech you thereby, I beseech you therefore, Brethren, by the mercies of God, Romans 12, 1, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. Listen, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, you must stay in character if, you're, if you are to make it through this world into eternity with Jesus. You do not want to get to the door and he's looking at you like, depart from me. I never knew you, ye that work iniquity, iniquity. For those of you who don't know what iniquity is, it is unrighteousness, it is sin, it is anything that is diametrically opposed to God's ways. 
and to his commandments. What are you going to hear? Will you stay in character long enough to reap the reward? Or will you drop out of character at every given moment, every time something goes boo in the night and pushes that wrong button and you jump up, Jack jumps up out the box and you start acting a plum D fool. What are you going to do? How are you going to handle that? The pressures of life. How are you going to handle it? In love or in the beggarly elements of the world, in your flesh and sin? How are you going to handle it? Hmm. I think it's time to have a little chat with the Lord about that. Pray about it. Seek God constantly until your change comes. He's patient. He'll give you time. But don't take all the time in the world, baby. He might be here, gone, and you sitting up there sucking your thumb. to my what happened? Where did everybody go? Oh no, he left me behind. Wait, wait, Jesus. Too late. Get it together now. Please. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin. I will hear from heaven and forgive all their sin. I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and he Yeah.